absolutely. Hello, hello, everybody. I am so um, excited today, this morning, Monday morning, um, to welcome our LCA featured webinar and our special guest, Amy Jo. Um, so there we go. We're live on Facebook. And again, I am so excited to welcome you to our amazing LCA community and our special guest, of course, Amy Jo. Thank you so much for taking some time out today. Um, today, obviously another great day of learning. And I am going to ask, uh, you know, in the chat box where you're from. Everyone that is here, please tell us where you're from, city and state. I would love to know. Um, and in the meantime, I am definitely going to introduce our amazing, amazing um, guest here, um, who we can all benefit from, which I'm totally excited of learning from you, Amy Jo. Um, you know, the mm -hmm. and, and the topic of this entire webinar is about workplace and how it's shaped and formed primarily by male attributes, right, and expectations. Yep. Women who are ambitious and highly skilled in their professional arena often find that they need um, to behave and model their leadership after men. And so that's what we're going to really focus on. But before we start, we've got Tanya from South Jersey. We've got a couple more people coming in, so I'm going to let that roll. However, in the meantime, let me tell you guys a little bit more about Amy Jo. Amy Jo collaborates with companies, large and small, to transmute negative energies. This is amazing. Fear, lack, and separation into positive ones. Love, abundance, and unity. Wow. Um, <laughs> like, I mean, your bio is just so amazing. I was briefly reading it this morning. I'm like, oh my God, five actionable items for any employer can undertake to improve workplace morale. Wow, you've got just an amazing, amazing bio here. So welcome, Amy, okay, Joe. Welcome thanks. so much to our amazing LCA community. How are you today? I'm good. It's great to be here. And um, thank you, everybody else, for coming as you're rolling in. I'm looking forward to... Um, to share in this space with you and um, digging into this question of how uh, women can really harness our authentic voice and power and um, really use that in service to um, our own increase and also um, increase of each other. Absolutely. And I think it's so important for us to know how we as women can um, really make a difference. I mean, look, we from so many different angles, not only companies, but there's so many different levels of communities and, and um, uh, you know, cultural backgrounds um, uh, in the workplace. So I think this is so fit fitting to talk about this. So tell us a little bit more about some of the actionable items that you would, um, you know, get, get, uh, give us some input on that. Yeah, well, first, I kind of want to pick up on what you had um, shared just briefly about the fear, lack, and separation, and yeah. the love, abundance, and unity. Yeah, let me just um, talk just a little bit more about that. That mm -hmm. is one of my um, company's primary foundational approaches to how we coach. And the idea is that the way we do the world as it is, the way we do business, the way we do education, healthcare, government, entertainment, all of it, religion, all of it um, has been shaped through those three primary energies of fear, lack, and separation. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and in 2020, one of the gifts that we got from that crazy, crazy year um, was actually really seeing that, like, whoa, like, we felt it, we saw it, we were in that bubble for a whole year, right? Of fear, lack, and separation. I think we still see it, mm -hmm. um, um, maybe not quite as intense as we get back to some semblance of what feels normal, but nevertheless, I think it's helpful for us that we are able to see that reality that we've all been shaped by those three primary, not very great energies of fear, lack, and separation. And the result is that we really all know how to do it very well. We we call it FLIS, the fear, lack, and separation. We call it FLIS for shorthand. Mm -hmm. And so we we are all really good FLISSers, right? We, <laughs> we, we speak FLIS, we talk FLIS, we act FLIS. Um, the good news is that the opposing energies to it, the energies of love, abundance, and unity, is what I believe we really came from. That's our origin story. And so we all have 
those energies and the memory of how to use them inside of us. We just haven't practiced it for very long. Mm -hmm. And so what we do at Pavo Navigation is we equip everybody with tools that are easy, simple, actionable, applicable um, to use in their workplace in any situation that actually feeds the energies of love, abundance, and unity. And you don't ever have to even say those words. <laughs> Usually we don't, you know, because typically we don't go around talking like that in the workplace, right. but um, we don't need to. We can action those energies in ways that create and cultivate environments that's better for everybody. Right. And quite frankly, it's more profitable, better for the bottom line. Right. And at, and at the same time, the, when you talk about negative versus positive energies, right, you talk about how what exuberates from within, it comes out naturally. And that natural um, state of, of um, the, the positive that we have inside of us, sometimes we um, kind of cover it up and hide it. Um, and we don't want mm. that. We want to bring it out, right? We want to bring it out in our work. Yeah. We want to show it in our work. We want to be able to um, make it a positive, like you said, and make it uh, to where it is actually benefiting the work environment. Absolutely. And I, I just want to echo what you said, um, that we hold it back right. because we've been taught not exactly. to be authentic, exactly. <laughs> like, um, especially as women, right? Like right. the, the, the things that are supposedly, you know, make us women, um, are not uh, welcomed in the workplace. You know, don't be emotional. Don't be sensitive. Don't, um, listen to your intuition. Mm -hmm. um, um, I mean, I have clients after clients after clients who say, and I'm talking very senior people in, in, um, in companies. And they say like, I don't want to be an asshole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I don't want to have to talk like that, act like that, behave like that right. to um, be heard. And so um, one of the number one here, I'll, I'm going to hand you all a very easy tool. And it's a foundational tool that you can use all the time. Um, and I invite you to, um, is getting clear about your values. What are my values as a human being mm -hmm. and as a professional? And if they're different, if you have two different lists, um, ask yourself why. Why do I have one professional list and one personal list? And then see where they overlap and if in fact you can integrate them into one list because really right we are whole people mm -hmm. and um to be consistent in how we behave and in choices that we make um is one of the most powerful tools we can have as a leader is consistency mm -hmm. and so integrating your values into one list so that it's, they are applicable wherever you go, whether you're, um, you know, um, in the middle of a business transaction or whether you're um, interacting with your friends or family, um, have those values be the same guiding list. Um, right. And spend time really, really thinking about what are these values for you? Um, I do this with companies and, um, you know, most companies now, it's a big thing to have your values, your mission, your vision, your values. Um, and then they, you know, paint them on the walls and then they never think about them again. Exactly. Um, right. And what ends up happening is people start using them as weapons against each other and um, ac accusations and measuring sticks and all of that. Um, and part of the reason that happens is because when companies set their values, they really don't know what they mean by them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is our, so this is one that gets used all the time. Transparency. Okay, so transparency is a value. What does that look like? How does it behave? What does it look like in conflict? What does it look like in crisis? What does it look like in success? What does that look like when um, there are things that are happening on one level that can't actually be shared with the whole company? How do you then uh, value transparency when you actually can't be transparent about everything. <laughs> exactly. 
you know, this brings me, and this is off topic, but la yesterday was semi day off for me. And I was just laying there on the couch and I was watching a movie with my husband and that movie was Milan. Uh. In Milan, they say this exact words that you said earlier, you've got to hide your true self. She has this energy, yeah. all of energy, her chi was so strong, but she was told to hide that, right? Yeah. So it's also a certain degree cultural, like you can't talk in front of men as much as high. And that, that energy is mm. brought to the workplace, right? Mm -hmm. And that made me think and say, you know, this is, and that's where I realized that, hey, I'm raising a good girl, a good daughter in the sense, stand up for yourself and, and be confident and be woman. It's all about women power. We say woman power, but what does it really mean? Right. right. Yeah. Right. And then when you bring the fear, when you bring that, um, oh, you cannot behave this way, you have to f be the good wife and you have to follow certain rules, that automatically is brought to the workplace. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, because we're whole people. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And yeah, when you exactly. say, you know, get real about your values, get clear about your values, not only workplace values, but your life values, your goals, your, your authentic self from inside. And that in itself is such a big aha for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Your authentic self from inside, get clear on your values. And um, if you can, um, I like to like write a little, um, you know, just statement about what they mean. So like, I'll, I'll share my values with you all. Um, easy and ease is one of my values. Mm -hmm. um, if it's hard, if something's feeling hard and pushy and strivy, I need to stop and ask myself, do I need to do this? Or, and if the answer is yes, then I need, then my next question is, okay, how do I do this easily? So going with the flow is for me a value. Um, another value is what I want for myself. I want for everyone right? Mm -hmm. Like everybody's life matters. Every creature matters. So I'm going to make choices that serve that. Another one is trust. Trust in the unseen energies that I believe are so real of love, abundance, and unity and trust in myself and trust in love, abundance, and unity. And then finally, um, I have two more. My, my fourth one is pleasure is a must. Mm -hmm. I have to have pleasure and beauty and passion in my life. And then finally is be present. Um, be in the present, be present. Right. Now is the only time we can take action. Um, and those kinds, those are values that I can remember. I know what they mean. I know how to apply them. And they actually, you can hear how they're actionable right? So mm -hmm. they're not, values aren't something that are just supposed to sit around and, and look pretty or, you know, have on a, on a, like a card exactly. that you take with you, but actually we use these every day. Right. And it's important to really, um, when I start my day, I always have my, I have a little cheat sheet where I have my core values, a couple of core mm -hmm. values written down. And today, which one am I going to focus on? Is it the positive side? Is it the gratitude side? Is it the abundance side? Or is it, um, you know, just trusting your team to do the best they can, right? So I think those, the, like you said, those values are so important to keep mm -hmm. them at your core, especially in our workplace, right? Our workplace, again, we sometimes we don't bring those to our workplace because of how we are shouted out, um, you know, by the male attributes and expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to get drawn back into what I call the fear, lack and separation, the fliss. Because remember, we've all been trained in it, not just men, we've mm -hmm. all been trained in it. And so, um, and, and by the way too, we all, there's, um, evidence all around that fliss works, right. right? Like, no, we have to be, we have to do this, you know? So we yeah. need stress because stress is a great motivator. We need fear because it's a great motivator, right? It keeps us going. It'll make my team work harder. Um, but the reality is, as I believe it, that the only reason we don't have more evidence that love, abundance, and unity, and all of the different iterations of that, that those actually work is just because we haven't used them. For, we haven't used them very effectively or consistently. Exactly. exactly. So give us a few actionable items any employer can undertake to improve workplace morale. 
Um, yeah. What, what, what are some of the actionable items that you can share with us? Um, um, workplace morale is, has changed, mm. um, since we've gone remote. Right. Um, there is some more, there are some more challenges, um, because we are missing out on the informal interactions that we have, that we're used to, you know, um, uh, running into somebody in the hall or like, you know, meeting up with somebody for 10 minutes while we each order an orange juice or get a coffee or something. Um, those are um, really important, right? And we don't get them when we're just meeting on Zoom. Right. So there's been a level of, um, required intentionality mm. that um, we haven't had to look at before. So um, I think intentional connection is critical. Also clarity about expectations of what the work place expects. Um, and if, um, how does that have to, what does that have to do with morale? Well if morale is low, right, right there's, right. there's usually something going on <laughs> that and you can sense it, you can sense it with your teams, right? You can definitely sense it to where even if it even if you're on zoom, you can sense that, um, that yeah. negativity, there's no energy, there's no um, positive flow of conversation, you can totally sense that uh, between each other, even okay. through zoom. Oh, totally. I mean, we are, we are um, little bundles of energy, <laughs> right? That's what we are. And so um, we, you walk into a room and you're like, oh, right. And nobody has said anything, but you know that there is some tension in the air or there's something that's uncomfortable. And yeah, we feel that over Zoom. Um, absolutely. And also, people take themselves off video, they, um, you know, they sort of disappear or uh, they're on, they're off, they're on, they're off, they're on, they're off. So there's all kinds of wonkiness that happens with Zoom too, um, that wouldn't happen if you're sitting in a conference room together, you know, somebody doesn't disappear and then reappear and then disappear and then reappear. And so there is a lot more um, capacity when we're together to have consistent communication um, than we've had um, this last year. And I think um, in either place though, whether we're in person or whether we are doing our work online, having a clarity of what is expected in mm -hmm. and from each other is really important. And then that goes back to the values, right? What are our values and how does that shape how we interact together as a team? Right. Um, and um, usually the morale has something to do, typically what I've seen is if there's low morale, um, it often has to do with the fact that um, we're not speaking to something that is happening. So there is either a conflict that isn't being spoken to, or somebody isn't being held accountable for something that's happening um, that isn't benefiting the team, or um, there's a lot of confusion over what the team is supposed to be doing, what our North Star is, how mm -hmm. we're supposed to, like who's doing what, where does my role star mm -hmm. stop and yours start? So how are we supposed to cross-functionally support each other? When things are confusing, that's when we often begin to make choices from fliss. Fliss, exactly. Mm -hmm. That is a good aha. When things are conflicting, that's when we make choices out of fliss. Uh -huh. And when things are confusing, when confusing. things confusing, we tend to make choices from fliss because we don't, we, I mean, it makes total sense, right? Like if you're, you're trying to navigate a ship and it's super foggy and you can't see the stars and it's kind of stormy, what happens? Well, you get nervous, mm -hmm. you get anxious. You're like, I don't know where I'm going and I don't know how to get there. And, um, and so that's when we begin making choices out of a more survival 
survival protective mode than one that is collaborative and creative and mutually respectful. And so clarity is what like cuts through that fogginess of obfuscation and chaos. And it allows us to make choices that are um, in service to a clear vision of where we're supposed to head. It also, clarity also allows us to hold ourselves accountable and to hold each other accountable. Now there is something <coughs> called clarity is power, right? Oh yeah. When you have that clarity, when you have um, that exact clarity, even in your workplace, I think that's more important these days um, because we're talking back and we bring it back to workplace because this is about women um, who are ambitious and highly skilled in their professional arena often find they need the beha to behave and model their leadership after men. Mm -hmm. And so when we have a different sort of clarity, it will bring um, uh, your values out, right? Because you have that clarity, you're not foggy, yep. right? You don't have this fog while navigating the ship, so to speak. Yeah. Tell, yeah, tell us a little bit more about that. Um, give us a little bit of clarity on that. <laughs> um, give you clarity. Clarity on navigating from clarity? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> <laughs> navigating from basically, you know, not coming from that fear aspect, right? We talk about that so much so. Like, you know, for example, the, the example that you said is that we are surrounded by men in the workplace. Mm -hmm. How yeah. do you put yourself uh, differently, right? What, uh -huh. what is a clarity kind of conversation look like and sound like? Yeah, with your male colleagues. Exactly. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had so this conversation with so many of my clients saying, the you know, the clients just say like, I don't want to have to yell to be heard. I don't want to have to be an asshole to have my work valued. I don't want to have to um, become exactly. a bully to deal exactly. with a bully, right? So right. how do you do that? Well, you... Um, uh, navigate with clarity and curiosity. Curiosity. Um, and yep. So first of all, you're clear about who you are. You're clear about what you value. And an another piece is uh, another tool that I offer my clients is I call it the insist list. Um, huh? And be clear about what you insist on in a workplace, what you insist on and require, um, like mutuality, collaboration, clarity, respect, um, uh, effective and consistent communication, um, you know, a, a balanced life. I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to work, you know, 80 hours a week or whatever, but be very clear about what you insist on. And so you have clarity of your values, clarity about what you insist on in a work environment. And then if something happens and let's say you're dealing with a, a male colleague who is, um, bullying and by bullying it can mean anything from overt being to um speaking down to you and to um mansplaining to um uh interrupting you consistently when right. you're in a in a, com a business conversation um to approach that person from um, a place of, first of all, non-judgment, right? Because we all fliss, we've all been taught to be flissy and um, men have been taught just as much of the rest of us about that. And so to offer them an opportunity to get into conversation and dialogue with you. And usually the language that I offer to my clients and that I use myself is, um, Hey, um, let me just grab a random name. Hey, Frank, um, I'm curious if you're aware that in um, the last couple meetings we've had, do you remember the one on um, last Monday and the one um, that we just had an hour ago? Um, I'm curious if you're aware how often you interrupt me when I'm speaking. Um, and then allow them to respond, however that is. And I mean, and, and then the offering that we're giving is, 
for them to increase awareness about the choices they're making, um, people don't know what they don't know. And oftentimes, I know it sounds crazy, <laughs> but people are often very unaware of the choices that they're making and how that is impacting other people. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you because they don't realize they're interrupting. I tend yeah. to do this a lot as my as a team leader for my team. I don't. I I will talk to my my director of operations in a meeting, and I'll be talking. You know, we we'll all be communicating, but sometimes I'll stay quiet and I'll listen to them talk and run the meeting, and then I'll interrupt, and then I'll interrupt again, and not realizing what I'm yeah. doing, even being a woman leader. Um, a woman leader in on, you know, for my several companies, I don't realize there are times when I interrupt. So my husband has to say that to me, that did you know? And I'm like, you don't have to walk on eggshells. Just tell me what it is. Yeah. You know? But did you know that you were interrupting? I'm like, oh my God, I didn't realize it. So sometimes we don't realize that, right? right. Um, but it's, it, it, when someone makes you aware of it, you're like, oh, okay, I'll remember this the next time, obviously. Yeah. The next time comes and we are aware of it. So communication is a big thing. Oh, communication is everything. Exactly. Right? Like you said curiosity and, um, you know, uh, coming from, you know, just that non-judgmental side also um, to come yep. from, right. Yeah, non-judgmental in service to connection, and collaboration and mutuality, right? And, and by the way, these are all iterations of love, abundance, and unity, right? Um, communication, um, mutuality, respect, dignity, uh, accountability, all of these are different iterations of love, abundance, and unity. And um, what I have found, uh, actually 100% of the time, I haven't found uh, anybody who, is, who has um, not, risen to the occasion when um, they have been invited into this kind of collaborative um, conversation, conversation um, yeah. male or female, um, because I do believe that we all come from love, abundance, and unity, and that that um, positive energy is in us, right. you know? Right. And most of us don't want to be jerks and assholes and hard to work with. Um, the majority of us um, really want to be effective at our jobs. We want to get things across to, across the finish line. We want to close on that deal. We want to um, create wealth and for ourselves and for others. And um, most of us actually, you know, give a damn. We 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 care about each other. We care about the planet. We care about what's happening. And we want to create those bridges. So um, I love how you highlighted the non-judgment. Very, very, very important not to be in judgment of yourself right. Right. or of others. <clears throat> and give each other a chance to increase our awareness about what is real for us. And that's another um, tool for harnessing seeing your authentic power as a woman leader mm -hmm. is um, increasing your awareness of what your voice sounds like. What right. is your authentic voice? Um, mm -hmm. And how do you regularly center yourself to speak from that? Um, right. I have a little tool called I am that. And I just encourage people, male and female, to write down things that they know are true about themselves. I am capable. I am experienced. I am highly skilled. I am funny. I am um, a relationship builder. Whatever your I am is, mm -hmm. <clears throat> keep that list somewhere near your values list. And, you know, I had uh, one um, client who was a, 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 a doc, a, a surgeon, and she's like one of the best surgeons at, at her um, uh, hospital. And she felt incredibly intimidated on a regular basis to speak up in meetings. You know, so, so don't assume that just because somebody is a high level something something that, that um, they find it easy to speak from their power. 
Again, we've not been taught how to do that. We've been taught how to be real estate agents, how to be business people, how to be doctors and lawyers and and um, uh, engineers, you know, dentists, veterinarians, but we have not been taught how to lead mm-hmm. or how to mentor and guide people um, and ourselves included. <laughs> so, um, so getting clear about who you are and owning your power. I am that. I am strong. I am smart. I am capable. And I had my my surgeon write down her list and keep it. She kept it on her phone. And so anytime before when she got all nervous, she was going to speak, review that list, take a deep breath and speak from that truth. Right. Um, and it is a powerful tool that you can action anywhere. You know, um, Amy Jo, you're speaking my language. Let me just tell you that. And the reason why I say that is years ago, I was very timid and I was, and and now when people look at me, you, was that you really? (laughs) Yes, that was me. And I know Sandra and Jake will agree to this, that no, that can't be her because Today, I'm totally a different person, you know. Um, today, I, and I learned through experiences, right? I didn't get here to voice myself, to be the leader that I am today in this industry um, just by not, you know, not growing up in it, so to speak. I didn't, you know, years mm. of experience taught me that I cannot, um, I cannot be timid and I, I need to have a voice. I, I really need to speak up if I want to be anywhere in this business, whether it's speaking up to my clients or whether it's speaking up to other team members um, that I was on a team with, or, you know, just um, confronting another powerful woman. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And I did have that challenge at one point. And, and um, unfortunately you were not there (laughs) anywhere to help me with this. (laughs) I, I learned on my own to, uh, and this is again from experience and, and learning the positiveness versus living in the fear side of things. And of course, friends found family more than anything was my support. Um, but being and knowing my story and being, being that timid to who I am today and growing from that, that I am building my empire, my business, it just goes to show you that it is definitely possible. Um, you know, if there's anyone out here listening to us saying, okay, I can't go talk to that guy. He's really this. And, you know, he is that, that boss that is just not um, willing to listen and shuts me up. This is where... Mm-hmm. This is, these are the skills that you would definitely want to learn from with Mary Jo. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, um, it's a lifelong lessons, right? It's a lifelong mm-hmm. lessons that every morning, you know, when you say I am, trust me when I'm in front of my mirror, putting on my face and doing my moisturizer and, you know, just uh, that's where I get my clarity from. Mm-hmm. I am powerful or I am a positive mm-hmm. human being. I am this. And, and, and in doing those positive attribution, uh, attributions for yourself or affirmations for yourself, it does take you to another level in your mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sure does. Um, if I can just say a couple things. Um, you were talking about confronting another powerful woman. I think oh. it's important to remind all of us that... Um, that women are patriarchs too. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, part of the reason why I really like the Fliss and Lao, Lao is what we call love, abundance, and unity. Um, why I like that lens is because it doesn't gender it. It makes it very accessible to everybody and patriarchy, you know, genders it as if men are the only ones who behave in the patriarchal manner. And that's simply not true, right? We, um, there are some very, very, um, uh, scary patriarchal women, um, because we've learned that that's what we have to do to right. kind of, you know, to, to make it or to get on top. Right. Um, and so, um, I just wanted to, to make sure that I was clear about that. Um, also in the situation that you talked about, like uh, having a boss, who's not um, willing to listen and who shuts me down and shuts me up, that might be very true. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may, um, um, employ your power. You may speak, um, with curiosity and from a place of strength and invite them to listen to you and hear you in a way they haven't before. And they may not, they might be like, nope, 
I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not going down that road. And that is something that we um, must be aware of and and going into these conversations to do so with clarity about what your goal is, right? Exactly. What what do you want to what do I want to achieve in this conversation? And then releasing attachment to outcome. Right. That's one of the most important practices. It's it's very challenging because we think when we plan, when we um, are are thoughtful and we make a great plan um, that we're going to get the outcome that we want. And and that is not necessarily so. And so releasing attachment to the outcome and going into it with, with clarity about who you are and what your intention is, that's the only thing that we can choose, right? We can't choose how another person is going to interact. And so we are not responsible for uh, um, changing the behaviors of others. We are right. only responsible and can only, yeah, for ourselves. And um, we are the ones that um, need to hold ourselves accountable for our own actions. And so if you're in a situation where your boss is like clearly made themselves known, whether they're female or male, doesn't matter, that they are not playing by your values, then that's great clarity, exactly. right? That's excellent clarity. And then you get to choose, am I gonna stay here? Oh or am I going to start taking recruiter calls? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's when I said to myself, I don't think, I, I, you know, this is where I want to stay when my voice as a leader is not being heard. And so, yep. like I said, this is a perfect, um, I love this because I love the opportunity I get to, to um, you know, interview you, Mary, um, Mary Jo, a a Amy Jo. <laughs> that's okay. People do it all the time. <laughs> I called you something totally different. I'm so sorry and apologetic for that. Okay. Um, but I do want to let our listeners, um, our, our viewers know, our listeners know, everyone that is here, this awesome webinar is recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube um, channel. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed already, please, please do so. It is LabCode Agents um, a YouTube channel, and you get to hear all this at your own time, own pace, whenever you can you know, listen to this, but, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, we have so many different um, webinars on that. So please do take the moment to subscribe and uh, listen in if you do need to get going. But I just want to continue, Amy Jo, that, um, you know, the real power, the, the, the easy reconnect, um, like you said here, find out how to easily reconnect with your authentic self. And we've been talking about this and consistency on your own voice and how to use it in service of your professional success. And that is what this webinar is all about, is talking about you know, how to really, in your work environment, get that authentic voice out mm -hmm. um, and, and, and really not live the, live the fear base, but live the love side of it and the positive side of it. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you um, have been, you have quite a bit, quite a lot of clients um, you know, that practice this. Um, tell us, a little bit about, well, maybe share something else that you can um, that is not fear-based, but, you know, the love side of it, like the authentic self, like we always say, the authentic self from within. We've talked about the positive um, uh, goals or affirmations, the values, the things we do on a regular basis. We have it right here, the sticky taps that we have here, you know, that we always follow and, and, and um, focus in on. Yeah, well, th those are critical tools to being um, authentic, right? right. Um, the practices of love, abundance, and unity. Let me say something about that. We think primarily that the two primary energies in the world are fear and love. We, everybody talks about that. Religions talk about it. Right. Um, that fear is the... Um, opposing energy to love and love is opposing energy to fear. I um, think that the two primary energies that drive our world are not those, but that they are lack and abundance. Right. And lack is the story of not enough. I'm not enough. There's not enough. So therefore um, I have to act out of fear. If I'm not enough, I need to be nervous about this next meeting. I need to, I'm intimidated by my client. I'm worried about the competition um, because there's not enough and I'm not enough. 
And so you see how that drives to separation too, right? right. So right. how do I be authentic? Well, um, we look at abundance and we go, okay, so if the if the lack story that I'm not enough and there's not enough drives me into fear and anxiety and really has the impact of shutting me down, um, then the opposing energies and the actions that come from them are um, through abundance and changing the story that we tell. That is a critical, um, critical step to owning your power is retelling the story that you want to be true. So I am more than enough. There are more than enough clients for me. There are more than enough um, deals for me to close. And um, my what, what I require from myself is that I um, trust that that is true trust that I am capable, all those I am that's that you, uh, that we, you know, just discussed that you're going to have on your device or somewhere around that you can access easily. And then in all situations, make choices in service to that abundance. So right. what are some iterations of abundance? Permission, give yourself permission, give yourself permission to not know something without judgment. Okay, so ask a question. Um, give yourself permission to um, to get excited even before the deal is closed, <laughs> um, because the energy of excitement is positive energy. Exactly. Um, it's not going to change it one way or the other. But like we've been taught to hold back and not get excited because you know I don't want to I don't want to set myself up to be disappointed. Well, you're going to be disappointed wanna... anyway if you don't get it. Exactly. Or I don't want to jinx it. That's another. I don't want to jinx it. Yes. Right. Um, but what you're doing, what we do when we do that, is hold back that awesome, great energy that is really, really attractive, right? Exactly. And it attracts people to you. Um, right. The energy of abundance, of allowance, of increase, of permission, that is such powerful energy. People want to be around that. Mm -hmm. um, they feel that, um, they feel that impact of um, growth mm -hmm. and opportunity and possibility. And mm -hmm. That is who I want to be selling my house and finding exactly. my ideal house from. Exactly. Uh, and, and, with. and as it is, your clients are nervous and stressed out. Well, how do you take a step back and say, you know what? I am going to de-stress and I'm going to flow up, even though they're so negative, bounce it off. And that's, this is something I teach my agents as well, is that even though they're negative or they might be negative because they're not finding the home that of choice because they want everything in it. How do you deflate mm -hmm. that and say, listen, be positive. It's a great market. Inventory will open up or whatever the conversation looks like and sounds like, mm -hmm. but be that po positive voice because listen, if you're not going to be that authentic and positive to them, with them and for them, it just doesn't serve the purpose of really helping them in the end and then referring you more business, their friends, their family, right? Mm -hmm. It's a chain. Our, 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 real, our business is word of mouth. Yeah. Right? So much so. And um, Daria, thank you for this comment. She says, I love it. Um, so thank you. We appreciate that. This it was amazing at what she's talking about. And it is so true in our work environment, in our workplace, our regular life. It's so important to, yeah. to be this voice. You know, if I could just say something about those negative clients, um, I totally get how that is so frustrating. <laughs> um, and um, I, I wonder if this is also a, a helpful um I'll, I'll just offer this as an option um, to handle and navigate and support those clients that are just so frustrated or negative or just maybe downright ornery, ornery um, is to, um, before you move too quickly into positive territory, um, just make credible how they're feeling. Right. Like, Oh yeah, I hear that this is a disappointment because this house doesn't have this and thus. Um, I, I, and, and don't like feed it, but you can just like in one sentence, acknowledge it exactly, right. acknowledge it. Yeah. And then you can say, I trust 
that the house that you desire is out there and we're yep. taking every action to get there. And then like not um, trying to pull them into positivity, but just owning your space for yourself and um, embodying that without needing them to come along. It's, it's kind of like that releasing the attachment to outcome thing. Um, because it can be super tempting to be like, come on, come on, come on, be positive, be positive, be positive. And then oftentimes that makes other people be like, mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be more negative now. Right, right. And it just <laughs> kind of like brings their shields up and you're like, okay, yes. this is becoming yes. more tougher to deal with this person. But yes. you know, at the end of it all, it's just giving them, especially in our real estate industry, giving them that, um, that clarity uh -huh. uh, and that acknowledgement that hey, it, it the, your home is out there. Yeah, it is out there, and we're just, it's going to take some time, but we're going to get there. And and I right. think that in itself, if you understand it, acknowledge them, and um, understand where they're coming from as well, mm -hmm. they might just say, "Oh, okay, she understands, or he understands," right. and now I can rest easily and know that I've got someone that is positive and knows what my goal is um, Absolutely. And, always, and, and that's exactly how I train my um, agents as well is that you know you got to be patient mm -hmm. this is not um, you know quick ready snap go you know right <laughs> it takes time um, uh, but yes time meaning you have to weigh that like if you've shown them everything that's a different story but you know it just it, every deal it's in its individuality Right. And it's deeply personal too, right? Exactly. It's a deeply it personal um, journey that you go on with your clients when you're uh, guiding them to find really their sanctuary, right? Yeah. Um, and um, that is, um, uh, you know, you're, you're, I'm sure you're doing all kinds of things. You're not just doing business, right? right. right. And it's so relationship, I think that is right. important. And I repeatedly say, that's my mantra. You're building the relationship. Mm -hmm. right. Yep. You're building the relationship. And that's true in any work environment, right? And so that goes back to that authenticity because when we, um, one of my clients called calls it code switching. When we code switch, um, oh. you know, which is like, I, um, I, Okay, so I know I know so and so and so and so and so and so are going to be in this meeting. So I have to be this version of myself uh -huh. now, um, or um, and and so every time we code switch, right? Like, okay, so these this is this client fam, this is the this client I'm going to show a house. So now I have to become this person. Every time we do that, we lose a little bit of our power, and we get more caught up, both mentally and emotionally um, with trying to be what we think other people want us to be, that we get lost about who we actually yeah. are, you right? And, identity, right? Yeah, and, and so then I, um, what I said earlier when we started was that consistency is one of the most important tools for an effective, powerful leader. Mm -hmm. um, if we're code switching all the time, we can't be consistent because <laughs> we don't even, you know, we're like, I'm losing track exactly. of who I am. <laughs> like, hey, which hat do I have to wear? Do I have to be yeah. this way? Yeah. Be your authentic self. That's what it's And it about. gets really confusing. Yeah, be your authentic self. And the more, what I have found to be true, both personally in my own journey and then also with my clients, is the more we practice getting to know that authenticity of ourselves, the easier it is to remind ourselves to show up as that. Exactly. And whenever you feel yourself, um, and, and I, I would invite you all to bring um, awareness to, to your somatic indicators, because mm -hmm. um, your body tells you <laughs> everything you need to know. So yeah. get awareness about like, um, where, do you, where in your body do you feel anxiety coming up or where in your body do you feel that, that um, I need to prove myself here or I need, to, I need to be somebody other than I'm not or I'm anxious about it or whatever because um, your body will, will um, like be like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like Amy Jo, you're starting, to, you're starting to feel like you have to prove, right? And so then I can, I can catch it before I go full blown into a spiral 
And that's when we can remind ourselves, okay, okay, cool. I see that I'm starting to go down that old story rabbit hole and I'm gonna choose not to feed that anymore. And I'm choosing the new story. And the new story is, and you can take out any of the tools that I gave you. You can take out your values list. You can take out your I am that list. You can take out your, um, your uh, insist list, or you can just not take out any of your lists. And just remember, I am more than enough. Exactly. Exactly as I am right in this moment. And the, the most effective thing, the most effective choice I can make is to be honestly who I am. Be authentic. Yep. Say what I actually am thinking, ask the question I want to ask, um, and, uh, release attachment to outcome. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time, Amy Jo. You are amazing. Some uh, great you. pointers here. Thank you so much. And uh, to everyone out there, thank you for listening or, you know, tuning in and listening to us and until next time. I will say bye for now. Thank you, Amy Jo. You're so welcome. It's been great being with y'all. Same here. Bye-bye.